Good morning and welcome to this demonstration of Microsoft Dynamics 365 Project Services. My name is Pierre Bertrand from CRM Dynamics. What I'm going to take you through today are the different steps that you can use to manage projects in project services. Since you're already using CRM, I won't be going through the basic CRM concepts. I'll just focus on project services. Now, what I'm going to take you through is we'll start with an opportunity. We'll then create some quotes for that opportunity, so different, uh, different options that we have for delivering this opportunity. We're going to put in a project against the quote to see what this quote could look like. We're going to analyze, we're going to staff it, we're going to do, uh, we're going to report progress on a project, we're going to manage a project, manage communications, and then eventually, if you wanted to, we could show invoicing. For now, we're going to skip on that because we find many of our clients are still using external ERP systems and financial systems. If you do wish to use Dynamics 365 for operations, then we can show the invoicing. So what we have here is the opportunity screen for Dynamics 365. So I've created an opportunity called Schick CRM. Make sure you're on the project information view for your opportunities. If you happen to be creating a trial in Microsoft uh, Dynamics 365, so if you want to play around with it, make sure you're always sticking to the project information screens. Otherwise, you won't see what I'm showing you. So this is a standard opportunity. What really is interesting, if I scroll down here, in the opportunity lines, you now have different opportunity lines. You have an opportunity line for projects based project based services, which can be fixed price or time material. You have a customer budget against these. So when, as we create our projects in our code, we can compare that to the customer budget. And you can also have product based lines. If I scroll down here, I've created several quotes. Let's say I do my custom development in Montreal, in Toronto, Vancouver. If I do it offshore, I just had my event, my Halifax team contact me and say, hey, we, we, we're interested in this project. Can we, can we have a look at it? I said, sure you can. So let's go in and create a quote. Maximize the quote. So all our information is brought in from the, from the opportunity. We're going to call this opportunity one, Halifax. So it's our quote for development from Halifax. So we're all set here. Just want to make sure we save. And I'm then going to go in and open up my development work so that we can provide a proper quote for it. As we're looking at a quote, we're just going to show you quickly the chargeability view. As you're creating this, uh, you typically will specify for your quote what functional consultants, uh, what roles are valid, applicable for this quote. Your rates, uh, your, uh, your costs will come through, standard cost based on the roles. You'll see your expected project margin. And uh, that's as we build a project. It'll, some of these, these roles are applicable, so we'll pick the right roles. And then here's your expense categories. You can decide whether they're chargeable or not whether it's at cost, whether there's a markup to it. I just want to give you a quick view of that flexibility. And if you edit sales prices, you can go in and edit your numbers directly into this group. Let's go back to our quick line. We don't have a project here, so let's create a project. There's two things you can do. You can either pick an existing project that, you, that you're working on. Uh, you could have created the project already, but if you're Doing it as part of this process, you can create a new project directly here. And one of the really powerful tools in project services, so Halifax development, is the ability to use templates. So if you have different types of installations, installations for different size clients, if you have specific consulting engagements, if you're doing, for example, a scoping or a discovery, Anything that you typically do uh, that is repeatable, you can set as a template. So here I'm going to do, I'm going to take for this purpose a agile development template. So when I have an agile project, typically 516 hours, that's what the template tells me, and about $55,000. But obviously we can change that. So let's save it. Now we have our Halifax development project in front of us. Now let's go to our project. 
since we created our project from a template, we now already have a work breakdown structure, which I'll show you in a second. So this is what everyone always wants to see, is the Gantt chart. So I'm in the, in the Halifax development team, so I'm looking at this project. This is part of a quote, obviously. So I'm looking at development here. 120 20 hours. Okay, I have a really good developer. It's going to take them only about 100 hours to do this. So go. And I, know, I have an idea of what I want to assign to it. Uh, discovery. I've already worked with this client. So it's not going to take me 30 hours to figure out what they want. It's going to take me 10 hours. And obviously, I'm, I want to get the, the project for my team in Halifax. So I'm going to put in a time that I think is realistic given my team. So save. So I've updated. So as you can see here, you can move things around. You can extend the time. You can change the different change relationships. Uh, there's you can basically do anything that you typically do with uh, with your project Gantt. You can go and update them. So you can change the hours. You can move them. You can click here if you want to change your hours. 212. It's not 212. It's maybe 200, for example, here. Uh, 200. Sorry, that's the it's high level tasks. I can do that at one level down. Uh, 32 could be 20. Save, update it, it's moved it. So you get to go, you can decide where you want to move it. So all the information is here. You can go in and update your project as much as you want. Once I'm, I'm done, then I'm ready to start looking at some other details around project services. So let's go back to our project. Let's look at our estimates. So given what I've done on my project for Halifax, I can see here by week, or I can decide to see it by month, by year, by day, the time phase by sale. So here's what I'm generating for revenue by month for this project. If I'm a resource manager, I want to see what the effort is. Okay, I've got 48 hours that week, 124 hours this week. Okay, great. I can get good visibility in my project. You can decide to minimize, maximize. You can aggregate. You can show in a grid. Uh, so it gives you a lot of flexibility to be able to get a better view on your project. Let's go back to our project. So we're now happy with our project. So I'm going to go to the sales section. Here's my quote. I'm going to go to the quote. Back to the quote that I was working on. So opportunity Halifax. What I just did is development work piece here. So I'm just going to open that up here. That was my project. That was my quote line. And what I want to do now is I want to give the sales team visibility on what I did. The import from the project. So, summarize by transaction type, sure. And finish. So what I've done here is, here's my quote line details based on my project. So here are all my different steps of my project, whether chargeable or not, well, time, resourcing unit is here, the roles that I'll be using, start date, end date, quantity of hours, sale price, Extend amount, i.e., use it $170 per hour times 40 hours to be my price. Here's my cost and my cost amount. So, all the information that the sales team needs for this quote. And they see now that we had a budget of $100,000 for this, but my quartered amount based on our standard billable rate is only $73,000. So, there's it's a nice way to see uh, what this team can, can do for this client for this project. So, they can deliver. Even though the client has a hundred thousand dollar budget, they can deliver uh, for at a standard price of about seventy three. So you can decide from there how much you actually want to quote the client. So from here, you would go back into your quote. You would, you would save it as one. You would add. Uh, so before you do that, you would go in and put in your fixed price portion. You would confirm the pricing for the uh, product line. So you would build the full quote. Uh, using the Halifax team, then uh, all the information would be there and then the sales team could go. So then at that point, you would go in and, and save your quote as one and you'd be set to go. Now, let me go to the project piece and show you a bit more functionality from the project side. So, project services, go to the projects. And we have 
contacts. Right, perfect. So here's our project for Halifax development. Let's go back to our work breakdown structure. All right, so work breakdown structure. So as I mentioned, the project uh, is now going to go ahead. We close the code as one, so we're good to go. So at this point, I want to know, I want to start looking at the team. I want to assign team members because the project is starting soon. So let's generate a project team. So based on the tasks that I have, the hours, the sequence, and what happens at the same time, we need two consultants, one program manager, one architect, and three developers to be able to deliver this project. Let's click on OK. So let's start staffing our project. So let's go to project team members. All right, so here we go. So when you generate your project team, it assigns generic resource except for the project manager. I'm the project manager on it, so I'm set to go. So I've got all these generic resources, and I don't have anyone uh, assigned to them yet for the hours. So let's check out with different scenarios. Let's use, let's look at developer one. So, and then hard book. So hard book means I'm going to go in and select a resource and assign the resource to this. So what I see here is you can pick your organizational unit. So if you have different business units, you can pick which one we're going to look at the resources. Uh, you can have organizational units, i.e. companies or countries. You can also break it down to business units if you want. Uh, you can create different, you can be users, contacts, you can have subcontractors, you can have different types of resources. You can pick a team of a specific team. Here's my role. If there's skills that you're looking for, for example, if I want someone who's got agile manufacturing, agile methodology, sorry, I can decide to add that. I'm going to apply and it added a couple of people at the bottom. And if I want someone who's got agile, not good, but proficient, I can create apply. Oh, I got no one that came up that was available with proficient. Uh, so I can just use agile good for now. So here we go. This shows me for this role, uh, so for my developer one role, here's the hours that I need, here's the weeks that I need, here are the people that have the skills and some time available. And uh, so if I look at Bob, for example, he'd be a good candidate, but he's already booked 16 hours here, 24 hours here. I only need him four hours, so we're good. Eight hours, 24, we're good. If someone was booked 40 hours a given week, I could book over it. So Bob, if I scroll over, Agile, C, Sharp, C++, CRM, pretty good. Uh, Dick is also pretty good. Faith looks pretty good. Gracie looks good. Okay, let's compare a couple of resources. Let's, let's compare Gracie. Let's compare Bob and let's compare Lori. So we get a comparison side by side. I can look at the skills. Uh, there's a target utilization. If their costs were different, you would see it here. Uh, and the available rates are here. They're all the same based on that role. So we're good to go to just developers. If you had different developers, class one, class two, class three, for example, they could have different rates, uh, and different costs. So we'll be able to, we'd be able to adjust that. So, okay. So here's what I have. I'm going to bid, I'm going to pick, let's have a glory for this one. So both resources. So successfully booked glory. I click OK. It takes me back to my resources screen and I can see here Lori as a de developer uh, 76 hours have been booked and it's from 11.22 to 12.15 so Lori is booked. So you can go in and do this for all your resources very easy but what you can also do is uh, enable resource sign up. So what that does is if you pick different uh, the big developer 2, developer 3, architect you can then go to a portal. There's a, a nice little app that your resources will use and they can browse and see what, what the projects are available and they can apply for projects. They'll show them what skills uh, are required, how it matches to their skills, and then they can apply. So if you have very large teams and you want to give people some, some autonomy and some, and some ability to be able to control somewhat some of, some of their assignments, 
you can go in and apply for assignments and see what's coming up. So that's one thing to do. Now, if you have, let me show you here, we'll use the rest resource too. If you have someone that maintains or assigns resources in a centralized way, or if you have a resource that's in high demand, or a group that's in high demand and you have someone managing that, you can go in and submit a request and send. So program manager or developer, let's look developer here, there's no one to sign. This developer here, I need some specific skills. I'm gonna submit a request. Or I want someone specific. So I say I'd like to so uh need someone with experience in automotive. For example. So here we go. Hit submit it so you can see it's submitted. So submit to the person managing the resources. So let's see what that looks like now. Project services. Let's look at in our resources piece, resource requests. So Halifax development. So I see Pierre requested a resource, 72 hours. Ah, okay, perfect. You can go in and let's find a resource for it. So here we go. So you can pick the you can pick the areas you want. Halifax development. In my task list, I would see the, the note that says I need someone with automotive. So let's look at we have we have Gracie available. We have Lori. So see Lori is in red here, so she's overbooked. Uh she's booked more than uh, 40 hours. So Marianne might be a good resource. Marianne might be a good option. And uh for that timeline, Vicky might be really good too. So here are the resources. You're all set. You can basically at this point. You can go in and email the person. You can chat with the person, sorry, with Skype. You can email. Uh, you can go in and, and if you were connected with Skype, you can go in and, uh, and Skype the person. I'm going to pick Marianne for this one here. Now, what I've done is as a resource manager, I've looked at request and who's available, and I'm set to go. Now, if by any chance, again, you're a resource manager and you want to see your resource utilization let me show you how you can get really good visibility now nothing here you have to always have to be careful with crm there's often filters apply so i'm just going to remove the filters so we can see everything there we go so for the weeks that are specified here here's what it looked like so here's who was available who was busy 75 percent of the time they have a 75 percent target utilization it appears in green we're all good uh the ones that are underutilized, so here we go, Dan was unavailable, was, uh, sorry, it was not booked, so he's he's got no backlog for these weeks. 50% for Dennis, you can scroll down, you can pick by team, by role, uh, you can pick consultants, if I pick developers, for example, I could see just my developers, and uh, as you hover over, you can see, okay, this guy here, Gracie was not really busy these weeks, if we would go over into uh, so the other weeks in November, you would see that she is busy if you uh, scroll over. Uh, but Gracie, I hover over. Okay, this is what she's got for skills. Ah, interesting. You can go back in again. And as I say, you can chat, you can email, go back and forth. So it gives you a really nice view on, on what your utilization is for your team, who you need to focus on to get busy, when you need to start getting projects in, and when you're too busy and you need to delay projects. So it's a very nice view to have. Now what we're going to do is uh, let's start putting some time in. So I'll go back to my project services. I'm going to go in and time entries. Now I'm the project manager, so I can obviously approve my the time. So if I go in and I put some time in for let's say 11, 12, so Monday, and nothing keeps you from putting time in ahead of time. So here let me cancel out this. Uh, the way this entry happens, you have a choice. You can actually go in and say I'm busy on X project from 9 a.m. to noon and then from 11.15 to 11.25 or you can use that kind of functionality or what I find is very useful for resources is to say okay on Monday I've worked for example on project uh, dev for uh, Halifax and I've worked on analyze and discover I've worked for two hours on this Here we go two hours appear here. Then 
I've worked on a different project, developing one here, and I don't have any tasks assigned to me, but I did end up having to work and help on the discovery side. And I worked for three hours on this one here as a functional consultant. So all your time appears in different uh, buckets. So you can go in and put your time because if you're looking at, at the end of the day, you can say if you're using, doing emails, phone calls, you're doing consulting work, you're doing configuration, you're going to install, you're doing different things. So it's much easier to go in at the end of the day and, and say, oh, I've worked about an hour on this, two hours on this, three hours on this, and you fill up your day rather than trying to start and stop with a whole bunch of little pieces and having to assign them all to different tasks, especially if you, you work on several projects, and several tasks at the same time. So what I have here, it shows me the breakdown of my hours. So I'm going to submit them through approval. So here we go. My different projects it shows me the detail. So work two entries for five hours total, previously approved 14 hours, grand total of 19. So you can tell people need to submit their hours daily, weekly, uh, depends on your uh, the procedures that you have and, and your policies for your company. So I'm going to submit my hours here. Here we go. Submit it. And if I wanted to go in and submit expenses, very similar process. I basically pick where I want to submit an expense. So I want to put in an expense purpose. Let's call it mileage. And it's going to go against project development Halifax and category. Do I have a mileage one? I do have a mileage one. And let's, let's put it in for 12 and save. So here we go. We have a mileage here. You can put all your expenses as you go for the week and at the end of the week, you go in and you submit. So it's going to submit one entry for $12. If you had several entries, it would show you the detail. All the details are here. You can go in and edit them if you want. Then you can submit. You can also put notes as we saw at the bottom here for the, the person approving. So if I'm approving project approvals, so let's see, ah, okay, time entries, I have one for Halifax. Ah, okay, let's have a look at this. Project track analysis, uh, there's no name for the entry, and uh, it was a functional consultant, a role, it was done by Pierre. Okay, perfect, we're done. Let's, let's approve. Perfect. And then on the expenses side, do you have any expenses to approve? Uh, processes, expense entries for approval. Say, oh, okay. Pierre's got mileage on here. So perfect. Let's approve it. Excellent. So then if I go into my project and in Halifax Development, so here's my project. If I go into actuals, I will see my actuals. So there's been time entered, there's been mileage entered. So you can bring that to an Excel template. You can export your actuals. You can run reports. You can get charts. You can filter it so you can manage the information for your project. If I go back to my project, and I go down to status. I load my charts. I don't have a lot here. You can see there's a little yellow line. So as your project would progress, it would show you cost consumption in your project. It would show you progress on your project. Uh, these obviously you can pick the views that you want. You can use project uh, task, phase view, role views. You can pick schedule performance and role. You can pick different charts. Uh, that you want, we can configure that for you. You can see one larger chart, some smaller charts. So we can make this view what you need to track and what you want to view for your project updates and your project statuses. If I go back up, let's talk a bit about some other functionality in project services. So I'll drop down the menu here. A couple of things to talk about. So here's where you create your project templates, which we saw earlier. So you want to create as many project templates as makes sense for your organization. It really helps streamline the creation of projects and makes it much more, uh, much easier for your team to maintain and to have accurate estimates and be able to, uh, to code quickly. As you, uh, it's also important to maintain your templates. So if you see that a, that an agile project 
really you have two types of agile projects. You have a small project, an enterprise project, like the two templates. Modify the first one, save as, and then you get your other template. So a lot of different things you can do. You can also have contracts and you can manage billing by milestones. Your project can have project milestones that can be tied to billing. So that's one way you can do it. Uh, if you are using an external system uh, or Dynamics 365, you can create your invoices from here. You can see your project actuals. You can see all your journal entries if you want to. So this is a uh, very uh, powerful solution, especially if you're using Dynamics 365. I'm not going to demonstrate that today. I wanted to try to keep uh, under 30 minutes for this demo, but uh, if you do want to see integration with financials, we can also show that. Now we're in our project. Remember, before we went in and looked at team members and resource requirements, you also have it here if you want to. So if I expand this one here. So all your information is here, all your resources, you can see whether they're still generic, who they are, who's been assigned. And if you go to the grid here, you can do the same thing we did before. You can pick a generic and you can go in and hard book. You can submit request, you can enable resource sign up. So you can go either here or you can do it directly into this editable grid. So you have different options to manage your team resources. So as with anything in CRM, you also have access to dashboards. So from a dashboard perspective, if you're the practice manager, you might want to see uh, current month versus prior months for uh, total cost. You might want to see gross margin by month. You might want to see gross margin by project. You might want to see total hours by month. Active role utilization. So by role, what's your utilization? We had 60, 70, 80, 90, 100% gives you a view. So here you see that uh, for the current month, you, here's your utilization. So my architects have been underutilizing to focus there. What you can also see is overall utilization for your whole team by month. And you can get a visibility out that looks also at your forecast. So there's different things you can do to help manage your practice. And if you, uh, if you were to move over to the right here, you can see your sales by month. So you're familiar with CRM. You know that we can generate just about any dashboard that you want to help manage your practice. And you also have dashboards. Obviously, as a resource manager, you have some as a project manager. So depending on what your role is, you might want to have a different dashboard. So if you're a resource manager, you want to see slightly different information. If you're a project manager, you might want to have a dashboard that would show some of these specific items. <coughs> Sorry. So if you're a resource manager, you have different information. So you might want to see uh, any comments, any posts, any activities happening. You might want to see your demand distribution. So Who's asking, what's the demand for for different roles, uh, active booking. So as, as I mentioned earlier, you can decide what you want to see. You can put six panes easily here and customize your dashboard. So we typically uh, recommend you have a dashboard for the practice manager, someone who manages all the projects and the program, for the resource manager, and for the actual project managers. So just a quick recap. What we've done here, we start from an opportunity. We looked at different uh, op options. So we created a quote for Halifax development team. We then create a project. The delivery team went in, analyzed the project, made some adjustments. We then said, okay, perfect. The Halifax team gets that piece of the project. Then they staffed the project, looked at progress. We basically went in and added some time. We assigned the, the team members. We put in some time, some expenses. Basically, continue with our project. We manage our project uh, from a communication point of view. Uh, I'll show you in a second some of the screens that we have to communicate with our team members. And typically, you would then go into an invoicing situation and uh, send either um, fixed price uh, invoices for fixed price work, for time material, invoices based on milestones, etc. Just to finish up here, a couple of things I mentioned before. So we have Microsoft Project Client Integration. So as you're going through and doing your project, you can build it, you can build your Gantt charts in Microsoft Project. If you want to, you can then publish to a new project and project services. So you can bring it in and edit it in, uh, in Microsoft Project. So you have different options here. 
One thing I, and here we go, and here was your resources. So one thing I mentioned also is on the utilization piece. So I showed you this utilization chart, but what we also have is there's an app that team members can use where they can see the work that fits your experience and preferences. So they can set up preferences based on project manager they like to work with, clients, locations, etc. If you have contractors that, that go in and apply for work, they can also go in and see some of the work that's available and they can basically say, hey, I'm interested in working on this piece. So it shows them things that they're that fits with the experience, it shows them a level of fit. As they scroll down on this app, they can, they can basically see other projects where the experience might not be as much of a fit, but uh, they can also apply or get information. So it really helps empower your teams and the people working on your projects to really get engaged and uh, see that they're having an impact. So in a nutshell, that's Microsoft Project Services. Thanks for your time. If you need any more information, please contact uh, myself, Pierre Bertrand at Serum Dynamics, or any of our, uh, or any of our other team members. Mm -hmm.